How strong are your 3D prints? More importantly, how do you know? Thanks to Gollum 3D, we have the power test piece and the Kraken tester to conduct informative, repeatable, destructive experiments. I've made quite a few resources between the videos on this channel and my free website on helping you tune your 3D printer. Today, I'm adding to that thanks to Gollum 3D. Using the simple power test, we can answer some questions on exactly how well our 3D printed layers are welded together. In late 2021, I was contacted by Mihal from Gollum 3D to have a look at their power test and Kraken system. Gollum 3D is based in Poland and has even designed their own 3D printer called the Gollum D. On their website, you'll find details of the services they offer and designs such as their Swiss Army filament sampler. You'll also find a brief page on what's to come in this video. As showcased on the embedded video, Gollum 3D has created a testing system using a quick to print 3D model known as the power test that allows us to easily test print settings back to back to determine how strong they are, specifically how well each layer has adhered to the last. The video has English closed captions available, which we'll be following in this guide. Let me tell you why I loved this system from the beginning and was so keen to make this video. You may be familiar with the YouTube channel CNC Kitchen. Stefan does a tremendous job of testing various tips and techniques when 3D printing, using his testing apparatus to generate quantitative data to inform his viewers. The only trouble is I don't have testing apparatus like that, and I'm sure most of you don't either. So if we want a way to test the strength of parts and techniques ourselves, we've been stuck until now at least. 3D printer settings are quite often about compromise, and one of these is speed versus quality. Printing slowly, most 3D printers can produce models of reasonable quality. But quite often as we start to up the speed, mechanical vibrations in the machine start to show up on the surface in artifacts known as ringing. Printing advancements such as input shaping now allow us to significantly increase our print speeds with a very minimal reduction in quality. But one area that hasn't received this magic bullet is the compromise between strength and quality. 3D printed parts are made of continuous plastic extrusions stacked vertically on top of each other in layers. We can increase the strength of these continuous extrusions by increasing the amount of perimeters, their width, or increasing the density of the infill. But that won't address the main weakness of 3D prints in that the layers stacked on top of each other are quite easy to split apart. The interlayer or vertical weld strength of the layers is largely dictated by hot end temperature combined with part cooling and feed rate speed. And these parameters are what the power test piece and Kraken will allow us to test. On one end of the spectrum we have slow and hot which produces strong but ugly prints through to parts that look beautiful but are in fact quite brittle because the layers haven't welded strongly together. This methodology by Gollum 3D will allow you to find the sweet spot. The first component we need is the power test piece which is available on the Gollum 3D website and has also been posted on Thingiverse and this part was designed by Mihal. Depending on where you download from, you might need to reorient this model on the print bed so that the small cylinder is facing upwards. For the test to work, we need to use support, and I found that if I added support from the build plate only, that the surface it needed support would be unsupported. However, if I turned on support everywhere, I would get an excessive amount, including at the rear of the model where it wasn't needed. So I would recommend, if your slicer supports it, to use paint on supports or similar, so that support material is only added where it's needed. Also when preparing this print, an infill percentage of around 20% is advised, and elsewhere, we need to adjust the vertical and horizontal walls so they have roughly the same thickness. Here's an example of when the vertical thickness matches the horizontal thickness well, and here's an example of the horizontal thickness being much greater than the vertical thickness of the shell and needing adjusting. We can then send the power test model to the printer and it shouldn't be too long until you've got a test piece. Your first job is to remove the support material from around the power test model. And this ends up being part of the test in itself because if any of the parts of the model delaminate, you know already that your interlayer strength is not high enough. My first test model shown here had a tiny layer shift, but apart from that was ready to go. 
It's worth pointing out that if you don't want to build the Kraken, you can still perform this test manually. If that's you, please use the chapters to skip forward. Kraken is the name of the device used to break the power test model and is a collaboration between Mihal and Joanna from Gollum 3D. It's mostly printed pieces attached to a piece of 40 series extrusion. Because the files to print the Kraken were not yet released, and also because I didn't have access to that series of extrusion, I ended up modeling a custom version. Make no mistake, this is simply a remix, and its form and function mirrors that of the Kraken modeled by Joanna in every way. The only difference of note is that my remix is designed to work with 20 series extrusion rather than 30 series extrusion, which I didn't have any of. 2040 or 4040 is fine as long as one side is completely smooth and has a minimum length of 250 millimeters. I printed all of the components in black PLA with high percentage infill for strength. The larger holes are designed for M6 hardware and I'd recommend drilling them out to 6 millimeters apart from the hole at the back of the push rod where it's advantageous to have this opening slightly undersized. The jig piece is a temporary part designed to clip onto your extrusion to give you a guide to drill a hole through. I'd recommend printing two, because if you only have one, your part will be unstable when you drill. The side of the jig piece can be flush with the end of the extrusion. You can clamp it into place and then drill through with a six millimeter drill bit, creating a hole that will be used as a junction between the printed parts and the extrusion. The wedge piece will slide back and forth on the surface of the extrusion and we need to insert four M4 lock nuts in the top of the piece, followed by four matching M4 bolts and washers, with these protruding just enough to catch firmly in the channel, meaning that when all four are in place, the part is constrained to slide on the surface. The piece I named the cradle is prepped with M4 bolts as well as T-nuts, and slides in and sits flush on the other end of the extrusion. If your extrusion is not 250 millimeters long like mine, you can relocate this piece to adjust if necessary. We slide either a long M6 bolt or some M6 threaded rod through the arms and the holes we've drilled in the extrusion. If necessary, cut the rod down, clean up the end and use vice grips on the section that goes through the middle to hold it in place while you attach the last nut. An M6 bolt and lock nut to attach the wedge to the push rod and two M6 by 30 bolts to attach the arms to the back of the push rod. The handle attaches to the end of the arms. You can glue it in place, but I found that my interference fit was quite sufficient. And that's how to assemble my remix of the Kraken. So let's get using it. I'm going to echo the instructions from the source video and recommend some safety glasses. As when the power test fails, it tends to do so explosively. But before that, we need to manually break off the little cylinder with some pliers. Doing so will give us a tactile feeling for the strength of the part, and we can inspect whether the cylinder came off in isolation or whether it pulled some of the material underneath with it. Next, we can manually break the power test with a hand tool, or in my case, unleash the Kraken. With the way the mechanism is designed, the power test will break, so now we can examine exactly how it did so. The source video provides a range of examples for what's a good result versus what's a bad result. And what we're looking for is actually quite simple. If you remember our diagram with the way a print is formed by stacking layers on top, we know that the weakness is those layers splitting apart when the part fails. A result like this would indicate poor weld strength. But instead, if the layers remain connected to each other and the extrusion snap in half, it means we have strong weld strength. If we examine my first test piece, we can see that the break is vertical and that means the extrusions have snapped rather than the layers coming apart, and that means my weld strength is good and my print settings pass the test. So I decided to repeat the test for the other printers that I use the most. So I printed a power test on each of them using my regular slicer settings. And of course, after printing, I got to destroy them all with the Kraken. My results I was very happy with, because for each printer, I primarily had a vertical break rather than a horizontal break where the layers split apart. A sigh of relief for my 3D printers, but that doesn't mean that my profiles can't be improved. Let's change some variables and see how we can tune things to reach that sweet spot. So what settings can we tweak to find that sweet spot between strength and quality? There's actually quite a few, but I think the best bang for your buck will come from hot end temperature, part cooling, and feed rate. As filament is extruded, it's quickly cooled by the part cooling fan and then it only takes a few seconds before it cools down closer to ambient temperatures. 
we can see the section on the right has completely cooled by the time the nozzle returns to it for the next layer. So to maximize interlayer strength, we can increase the hot end temperature, decrease the part cooling and slow down the feed rate to give the new layer of plastic the best chance at bonding strongly. So let's play with these settings and my focus is the SK tank. It's running the E3D Revo hot end, which has proven capable at printing fast, even though it's not really designed for this, and twin 5015 blower fans. I've always run these blower fans at only 80%, worried about weakening the parts too much, so the first test I'll do is upping the speed to a constant 100%. The appearance of the power test looked good, and there was no issues with the snapping of the cylinder. And after utilizing the Kraken, I found that my brake was still primarily vertical, which tells me I can run slightly higher part cooling, improving small details and overhangs without compromising strength. But how much can I drop the temperature before things start to look bad? I ran some back-to-back -back tests to judge just that. And I'm pleased to say the results were encouraging. Each of these tests from left to right drops the hot end temperature by 5 degrees Celsius. And if I highlight the surface in which the model broke, you can see that it transitions from a vertical break through to a horizontal split where the layers aren't welded properly. What I'm pleased about is that by changing a single one of these variables, that practice was able to match theory with the power test piece and the Kraken being a suitable way to show this. Firstly, I would totally recommend this process. The power test model is quick to print and uses very little filament. Making a Kraken is really fun too, and my kids loved helping me break the parts. But if you don't want to build one, you can still use hand tests. This test is reliable and repeatable, with real world results matching the theory. So what's the rule of thumb for this process? Run the test, and if your piece is too weak, up temperatures and lower part cooling, keeping an eye on overhangs and the small features of the power test print, as well as any added stringing as an indicator of loss of quality. If your parts are already strong enough, you can change your settings in the opposite way to see how much cooler and crisper you can get away with. Even if this isn't for you, simply appreciate the fact that people in the community are willing to put in effort for free to make our lives better and tune our 3D printers. Thank you to Gollum3D for creating this awesome system. Thank you to you for watching. And until next time, happy destructive testing your 3D prints. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.